Hey guys, welcome back to another Virgo Girl recommendation. I am super excited to talk to you about today's recommendation, which is Killers of the Flower Moon with none other than Leonardo DiCaprio um, and of course Robert De Niro. And, you know, we also have the, um, the lady who started, the leading lady, Lily, who was in the movie as well. I mean, great film, great film, great film. Let me start off with that. I really enjoyed this film. And man, I don't even know how to... Oh, um, and I... Well, let me just stop here. I didn't say her last name. Her name is Lily Gladstone. Let me just give her... Put her full name out there. So the leading lady was Lily Gladstone, and she did a, a, a great job. So moving right along to the characters, uh, we had Leo. Now, with Leonardo DiCaprio, if you've been on this channel and seen uh, some of my videos on Leo, you know that Leo is like my favorite actor. I think that Leo is amazing when it comes to acting. I love how he gets into character. I love how he just embodies whatever role he's in and the character he plays he just becomes that character in such a way that you don't even recognize him he's also very very versatile he doesn't play the same role he plays all kinds of different roles and he excels at all of them i love leonardo dicaprio i think yes he's amazing now with this movie i have to say when i saw him on the screen and you know, the first moments when he's on the train and his mouth is turned downward and he has this little simple look on his face and it's just, you know, you know something's up with him. Like, and it's just, I was in store for something great. I was ready. I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. I already knew that he was getting ready. Well, when I say this is going to be good, I mean, his performance is about to be good. That's what I knew I felt it in my soul from the first moments I saw him just because he was already in this had this look and he had this you know they had him made up to look a certain way he had some kind of hump in his back like his you know his posture was different I mean just it just was someone from back in the day who was just like a simple person he seemed like he didn't have very much money you know just yeah, he just was, he was, he was in character and I was ready for it. Anyway, so basically when I saw him, I immediately thought of Sling Blade. Sling Blade with Billy Bob Thornton, which he plays a guy who is slow and Billy Bob Thornton, oh my gosh, Sling Blade is to this day, one of my favorite movies. I think, man. The job that man did on that movie was amazing. Like, I just think he did an amazing job. Sling Blade, man. Anyway, when I saw Leo in this movie, it just put me in the mind of Sling Blade. Now, don't get me wrong. Leo's character is in no way, shape, or form to the extreme that uh, Billy Bob Thornton's character was. He, he He's not at all. You know, he is definitely more functioning, definitely, you know, it, it's, it's a different type of character. But in the same way, uh, he is playing like a slower character, like simple, you know, not so intelligent, you know, a little slower than everyone else. And also the type of person that people could possibly like get over on and he not know it just because he doesn't, he's not sharp enough to pick up on things, especially from people who are like, what, how they say street smart or, you know, people who are like con artists and things like that. So it, you know, you definitely see that right away. And he almost has like a childlike presence, if you will, even though he's a grown man, he's kind of childlike in his, um, you know, the way he acts and his mannerisms and also just how he speaks because everything is very simple. You know, the way he forms his sentences, it's like almost like coming from someone who has a li very little education or something you would see from someone who is a child, you know, who hasn't had the time to build up their vocabulary or something. So at any rate, so you have him in this role, you know, and Leo, you know, he, he's, he has this role down. Another thing I noticed about this guy is he seems to be like willing, like a follower. That's what I picked up on this character. He wasn't a leader. You know, this guy came across like as a follower and, you know, you could just see 
that that was going to get him into trouble. All right. So then we have um, the character of Lily, who is the other star of the show. She's, you know, plays Leo's wife in the movie. She's very, um, how do you say this? It's funny. How can you be strong and extreme? She's extremely strong and extremely passive and submissive at the same time. I mean, and it's almost like seamless. She, it, it, it's, it was amazing. So for her to convey that through the screen, I loved it. I'm just like, she is nailing it. So when I say strong, you can tell she's a strong woman. She's obviously, you know, smarter than her husband. She obviously is up on game. She knows what's going on. But at the same time, you have to look at the time, the year it was. Women didn't have the same rights as, you know, women, of course, have today. So she totally almost like knew how to stay in her place, if you will. But at the same time, she really wasn't willing to stay in her place. But she, no, I'm sorry, she didn't want to stay in her place, but she did anyway. But you could see that she was smart enough to know that something's up, something's not right with my, you know, with what's going on. And she was smart enough to do something about it. But at the same time, she was passive enough not to, you know, like nag her husband about it or even like question him at all. So it was just amazing because I feel like it was so multifaceted the way this character was. I mean, like I said, she was very strong and then she was super passive at the same time. It was the way the way that all came together was perfect. And yeah, I I love that part of her, you know, and I felt her emotions. I felt her because we've all been there. Like when you're talking to someone and they're they're maybe like a bit condescending or, you know, trying to tell you something. And, and it's obvious the person I don't know if you've experienced this, but I've experienced this where I'm talking to someone. They're obviously not very intelligent. They obviously don't know what they're talking about. But at the same time, they're being kind of condescending and they're trying to manipulate you, gaslight you into thinking that what they're saying is correct. And you're looking at them like, excuse me, because you have full knowledge and you have facts back backing that what they're saying is totally not right. And you know what's right. And it's just... You you know, it's just really a frustrating situation. But at any rate, I feel that she conveyed that like perfectly without being aggressive and saying, no, you're, you're lying. You're not. No. You know, like what most people would be hard pressed to do. Most people, when they know the facts, they know the person is not telling the truth. They know the person is not very intelligent. It's really hard to sit and listen and sit through things like that. But the way she did it was like, ah, perfect. And, I, and I'm just kind of like, I'm kind of skating around things because I don't want to ruin the movie for those of you who haven't seen it. So that's why I'm giving these examples and saying it this way. But she did a great job. Great job, Lily Gladstone. Now, Robert De Niro was also in this movie. And I just want to say, I think he did a good job. I feel that his character, even though... I knew, like, I could feel, like, what his character was and what he was about and what he, how he was coming and things like that. I wanted a little bit more passion from him in this role. I wanted a little bit more from Robert De Niro. And I think it's just something, I feel like with his character, there was just something I, that was just a little bit missing there. We just need a little bit more from him. But I did enjoy uh, his role because it took me back to this boy's life, which was, I believe, um, I think I'm, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that was Leo's first major role. And man, it was, when I say major role, I mean like major movie. I think that was his first major movie and it was with De Niro. And to see them together again, and then to see so in this boy's life, which is a movie that I should should have rec should do as a recommendation, but anyway, in this boy's life, Leo um, is young, very young. 
So it was like, you know, like I said, one of his first movies. So he was very young and he was Robert De Niro's stepson. And Robert De Niro in this movie was a monster. <laughs> I mean, the worst stepdad you could have almost. And the way he treated Leo was just like horrible. And seeing them two together again, and then Robert De Niro in this movie, is all, he's not like this boy's life. You know, it's not the exact same, but he's, it, it takes you back to that because some of the things that he does to Leo is kind of reminiscent, reminiscent of the... <laughs> the the this boy's life when Leo was very very young so that that was kind of cute the way they kind of threw that in there and well they didn't throw it in there because this is a true story but how it kind of ended up being that here is De Niro again picking on Leo a bit you know so yeah that part was kind of interesting and uh just brought me back memories of this boy's life which is an amazing movie which I love 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 I love this boy's life it's such a great movie if you haven't seen it check it out it's so good but at any rate, back to the movie here. Um, I feel that Leo definitely deserves an Oscar. So I talked about Sling Blade. There's certain roles that you play. You have to really, really, really bring something to the table to make them believable. And not just like, um, you know, uh, I don't know, have the people, uh, you know, walking away feeling iffy. Leo did it. He executed this movie perfectly. And the emotions, or shall I say, lack thereof emotions, because of the fact that he was playing someone that was simple and that didn't get a lot. Whereas um, when I say lack of emotion, that part came from where I think another person who was maybe more, a little bit more intelligent would be angry at the fact that these things were happening, like towards the beginning, like the things that were happening to him, they would be more passionate about it. But you saw him like, oh, okay. You know, like just being like, it helped you to understand where his mind was and what level he was at as far as IQ or, you know, goals, things like that. Like just how intelligent this guy was, because a lot of the things that he was just so you know, kind of relaxed about, it was a big deal, you know, anybody else would have been like, uh, up in arms, if you will. And then also it showed another side where he got to show, which he is so good at showing emotion, like a lot of emotions when certain things started to transpire and he kind of like started to wake up a bit, uh, where he did show emotions. Ah, did he nail it? He nailed it. There was one part of the movie where he was talking to Robert De Niro the way he was talking to Robert De Niro, oh my gosh. I don't want to say where they were because I don't want to spoil the movie, but there's this one portion, and you'll know it. It's kind of like towards the end. They are having a conversation. It's just him and Robert De Niro, and Robert De Niro is like this polar, polarizing figure. He is, you know, larger than life. He's a bit intimidating, you know, strong figure in the community, if you will, and Leo is just like this simple guy. And, you know, he kind of looks up to Robert De Niro, you know, as his uncle and, you know, just this big, big king guy, you know, in the community, you know, or whatever. So basically on this particular portion of the film, when Leo is talking to Robert De Niro, it's almost like the tables turn a bit, you know, just a little bit to where you can see that angle of Leo kind of looking down on De Niro and letting him know it is what it is and this is what it's going to be kind of thing. Um, and that's all I can say about that to not spoil it. But basically, yeah, Leo, there is a point where Leo kind of asserts himself in his own way. And then I love that Leo was emotional he was asserting himself, but at the same time, he was still that simple guy. You know, you still knew that he was that guy that wasn't exactly perfect in articulating himself and articulating himself, but he was able to string the words together in that moment perfectly. Ah, that was perfect. Perfecto. Great job. Great job. Great job. I love that. That had so much meaning. Like basically, hopefully people didn't miss that because that really had, a, that was a turning point there. Very important part of the movie. At any rate, 
I also wanted to touch on a lot of people saying, you know, things, the things that people, some people had said about the movie itself. Uh, so happy that I, you know, watched this movie on my own with a clear mind and didn't allow other people's opinions or, you know, anything to kind of distract me from this magnificent film. So I want to start off by saying this and going into this particular part of this video. The movie is telling a story about trauma. I mean, trauma in, in a way that most of us can't even imagine, okay, to a group of people. This movie is based on a true story and it is telling their story. So number one, when telling stories like this, any type of documentaries, when you're dealing with history and people in history who were marginalized, people who were indigenous people who just got the short end of the stick, these stories are in depth, they're tragic, uh, they're, you know, detailed and the human element of it, you definitely don't want to leave that part out. And then the history you don't want to leave out. And then the villains you don't want to leave out because all of this goes hand in hand and shows and, and it just shows like exactly what these people experience and you want to be so respectful of that and respectful and covering it in a way that people now can understand like I feel like I learned things myself by watching this movie because there are things that I didn't know so the movie itself the link so the movie was um three and a half hours long and to me personally it seemed on on point. You don't want to shortcut telling someone's story. If you shortcut it, then it's going to seem unauthentic. If you speed through things, um, you know, it, it's just, it, they need this time to tell the story in a way that is respectful, it's accurate, and it depicts what needs to be depicted for people to understand what these people went through. They went through a lot. So there was a lot that they went through. Another thing, when most documentary, I don't know people if people noticed, but when you look at documentaries that are about the past, you know, any type of people who were, you know, harmed in the past, these documentaries, uh, these based on true story, uh, you know, movies are always, for the most part, pretty long because they have a lot to cover. They just do. And for the parts of the movie that you may feel that was kind of drug out, they could have made that shorter for someone watching it who is being educated or someone who is from that background. It is help. It is welcomed. It is appreciated because the parts that they're putting in that you may consider slow are parts that go hand in hand with all the rest of the movie and makes everything make sense. And it also allows them to introduce all of the characters that were a pivotal, you know, part of the whole thing that occurred back then. So they had a lot of characters um, in this movie that they kind of like threw in there. And at the same time, throwing them in, they had to make it make sense. You know, they had to give that person a little background. So you kind of knew that person. You kind of knew a little bit about them. And, you know, string it all together. Even the guys who were like the criminals in the movies, they kind of like, uh, you, you could just see where they would kind of give you a little bit of background on them too. And I think for me, I like that. Because a lot of times you see these characters just pop up where who is he, who is this person and where did they come from in a lot of movies? And it makes it kind of confusing and all over the place. I like that they added that little bit uh, to it. And if that gave that extra 26 minutes or 36 minutes to the movie, uh, by them adding that portion, I say bravo, because to me, it made the movie itself just more believable. It just made it easier to understand, easier to see where people were coming from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I enjoyed it. The length of time to me wasn't bad. And I am a person that has a very short attention span, and I don't like sitting down watching even if it's, not, you know, it, I'm hard pressed to sit and watch something for an hour and a half or two, but this one did not bother me. When something's good, it's good. And it doesn't seem like you're there that long if you can appreciate the art. So for me on this one, yes, I can accept the length of time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. 
I will say one thing about this movie, if I have one critique, it was the ending. I, the ending I didn't love. I have to be honest. I don't because, you know, I just, I, I so the ending, the ending gave me kind of what I needed, but I would have rather have seen um, it in a different kind of way, if you will. And I can't even say anything more because it's going to ruin it for you, but I would have liked to see the ending played out just a little differently. And yeah, that's that. That's the only thing I can say about it. But I really enjoyed the movie. I feel that uh, Leo definitely deserves an Oscar, period. I mean, that's it. I, I think he deserves an Oscar for this movie. Dust off your suit, Leo. And Oscar committee, give him his second Oscar. He deserves it. And yeah, I mean, I loved it. I loved it. And I loved his, you know, the way he played his character. I think he did, definitely did it justice. I think he, def him being in the movie and the way he played that character definitely added to what they were trying to bring to the table in showing just the effect effects of his people on, uh, you know, the Indian tribes. And also, um, I want to say, speaking of that, let me go back to another part of the movie that I want to talk about. The whole thing with the Osage uh, Indian tribe, I thought that they did a good job on that too. I like the pictures, like when they took the pictures of the people. I like that they kind of incorporated a bit of their language in the movie. I also like that they had Leo and they had Robert De Niro, you know, uh, you know, a bit speaking the language to let you know that these people, this was their land and they were the ones who were wealthy. They were the ones who really had, you know, all the uh, wealth and the riches, but they also showed how even though they were the ones in charge, they were still almost like treated like second class citizens, which was wild, which was absolutely wild. Kind of reminds you of Africa a bit. So they, you know, you have these people here and it's just like, what is this? All right. So then you go to the women in the movie and i love that they showed these women how strong a lot of these women were a lot of these indian women were i liked that they showed some strength um and i also liked how they showed the camaraderie the kind of like brotherhood of the men the indian men that were in the area but at the same time, I got the feeling that they weren't just vicious people like that. You know, like deep down, I feel like they portrayed them perfectly. Like, yes, we're willing to stand our ground and, you know, pr protect our families and protect our land. But at the same time, they gave them this or uh, these are good people. You know, they're just trying to live their life. They don't want to be a part of all this drama. They're not seeking drama. They just want to live their lives and be safe and, you know, healthy with their families kind of thing. But, you know, they had to do what they had to do because of the cars that were dealt to them due to outsiders coming in causing problems. But, yeah, I did like that. I'm, I'm so happy that they told their story of the Osage people. And, you know, I think it's so sad that they had to go through this. I mean, just sitting back looking at this, this is crazy. Imagine if they hadn't have gone through that and they had the opportunity to keep their land, their land had oil on it. They were very wealthy. Imagine if they were just left alone and able to do their thing on their land. Like no one came by to mess with them or what have you. Imagine what that would look like today. So yeah, that's just really something to think about, you know, how these people were treated and so on and so forth. Yeah, that, it was kind of, it was a very touching story. It's very sad, um, like I said, that they had to go through that. But anyway, I think they did a good job of telling the story, getting the story out there. And I think it's a story that needed to be told because like I said, a lot of this information I didn't know. 
So it's good that that particular group of people had an opportunity to be, you know, seen and heard, you know, by millions. And now their story is out there. And I, I mean, of course, I'm sure this is not the first time that this is, this is not the first time the story has been told. I'm not trying to come across like that. But what I'm saying is when you bring a story like this forward and you have people like Leonardo DiCaprio, Scorsese and De Niro behind it, it's going to get draw more attention and it's going to get in the be seen by more people you know just by them being on it alone so i think that's great and i'm glad attention was brought to it and the film was great i'm hoping that they win a lot of awards because i feel that they went all in i think they um all worked very hard and made a movie that they could be proud of anyway i'm gonna wrap this up guys Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.